Hi, this is V from Diamond in the Rough, and uh, thank you for joining me again. I'm um, just doing a probably a short drill with me. Might end up a long drill with me. It all depends. Uh, my partner's gone out to work on four-wheel drives for the night, um, so I thought, well, I'll just work on this and do a drill with me while um, while he's out, and I'd continue on my travel chat about uh, my trip to Egypt. I am working on the boot, um, gradually getting through it, gradually, gradually. Mm. So yeah, um, where are we at now? Right now it is 9th of Jan, sorry not 9th of January, 11th of January, Friday nights about 9 o'clock at night. Um, I did my last night shift last night. Uh, yeah, got home this morning. I've had a sleep and I've done a bucket load of diamond paintings. I've done housework. Um, but I can't get out of night shift mode fully because I'm actually doing an additional shift tomorrow night. So I won't, don't want to... I need to try and keep my night time ritual a little bit so I've got to stay up as late as I can tonight uh, so yeah so yeah that's uh, that's where we're at now and so yeah this is the the boot that I'm working on still slowly getting there frustrating bits still good bits still so yeah combination of everything on this one uh, I thought I'd continue on now and talk about my Egypt holiday. And for those that have made the comments, thank you. Um, I'm I get passionate about my holidays and what I do, and then my planning. So <laughs> more than likely, I'll probably start doing a drill with me while I'm planning a holiday and <laughs> looking for feedback or anybody's advice. So that's uh, yeah, yet to come though. Alright, um, so yeah, on to the holiday. Where I last left off in Egypt was a uh, quad bike ride, uh, Haggadah, my first day in Haggadah, which is at the Red Sea. So, uh, next day after that, so what was uh, day 10? I was supposed to, got up in the morning and I was supposed to do the, I don't know whether it was an underwater submarine thing or, or something rather on the Red Sea, which I'd booked, I was looking forward to, booked it all through via your guide. Because I was feeling a bit exhausted from the night before, um, and also because my stomach wouldn't, had not 100% settled, I decided that I was just going to do nothing at all and not even go on the um, tour. So I had a to have in the morning. So that was booked for the morning, but I still had I kept to my booking for the afternoon. I had another thing that I did in the afternoon. So in the morning. I emailed get your guide to say I won't be won't be attending. Didn't ask for a refund because it was you know, only a few hours before I was supposed to be picked up. But uh, yeah, couldn't couldn't face going in a submarine underwater. Just yeah, wasn't quite up to it. So that's something I did want to do, but I didn't do at the Red Sea. But what I did do for the morning is I put my bathers on and wandered around the complex. And um, ended up having a swim in the Red Sea, which is pretty cool. Uh, my website's actually got a photo of me <laughs> right out in the distance <laughs> in the Red Sea. Yeah, it's out in the distance. I don't like close-up photos of myself. Um, so yeah, we did that. I did that. I, I went between the Red Sea the lagoon that they have at the where we where are staying and um, their actual swimming pools because they've got swimming pools there as well 
So I swam in both. Um, but generally I had just a lazy day. Absolute lazy day. Did nothing. It was good. Uh, when I went into... Oh, my biggest... My hardest thing to struggle with is when I'm on holidays. Some of the foods I like to eat are things like bacon. And couldn't get bacon anywhere in Egypt basically. Um, but I got beef bacon. I tried that at breakfast that morning, my first morning in Hagada, and went, nah, beef bacon, it's, it's just not bacon. So, yeah. Um, so, just waffling here. So, if you're looking at, if you actually look at my website, you'll see the photos of the lagoon where I went for a little bit of a swim. One of the lifeguards took photos for me. And in the afternoon, I had a tour set up where I um, was taking on a walking tour type uh, trip which is where a lo you meet with a local and they drive you around and they take you to places and, and then you get to feel the local what it's what it's like to actually for the normal person living there so I was picked up I think her name was Sarah. Yeah, it was Sarah. Um, and like, I'm not, I don't go against religions, but and I will say it because you couldn't tell. You could tell. So this this was a young Muslim woman that um, I met. Uh, they pulled up in a car. Her brother was driving. So she was gorgeous. Uh, I didn't really speak to him. He kept to himself. But, but the tour was with her taking me around and he was her uh, chaperone driver and yeah we she took me for a walk around uh, through the fish markets it was a very quick walk through the fish markets because I don't like the smell of fish markets um, and had a good chat with her there we went into a the mosque one of the mosques there and she was talking about it and she said well to go in you know we'll need to cut you need to cover up she said what you're wearing is fine but we need to get you a scarf for your head you know we need to cover your head I went oh no that's okay I carry one um, being in a religious country like that you know that there's a requirement so I automatically carry a scarf so I pulled my scarf out and put it on and she just looked at me and the look on her her face was you know, it was, she was a bit, she seemed a bit confused and I turned around and I said, you know, I, I respect everybody's religion and I will, if if I have to, this is what I have to do to go in and have a look. Um, yeah, she, she, because, I suppose because the good example was there was another crowd nearby, so it was just me and her, but there was another crowd nearby and the women were actually complaining about having to put headscarves on. And um, to me, it's all about respect and respecting other people. Just because it's not a religion you believe in, if you want to go into their church or their places of worship, you don't need to believe in them, but you need to respect how they are. If depending on what religion you are if you were in a in a church and i'm not religious at all if you were in a church you're a religious person in a church and someone walked in in a bikini i think you'd be very offended that's the same to them because their modesty in their religion is so much higher um in the way of head coverings I like to look at the way the head coverings for religion. There used to be a time where entering in churches, you women had to wear hats. We used to have to have our heads covered up. Just modern society has changed that. Whereas I believe the Muslim religion, modern society, has not changed it. Their religion is so their religion and their beliefs are so strong. 
that's the way I see it anyway whether that's true or not that's just my impression but yeah so when I turned around and said to her you know I respect your religion I know that I'm going to need to do this um, to go go in and she was she was really happy with that and had a pretty good chat with her we went into the mosque and she turned around and she said you can take photos and I said no I can't I, I might be able to take photos but I won't because this is a church this is where people worship and I respect it and she was like people take photos in churches I said I don't take pictures in churches the only time you get as a tourist I won't not now I have taken some in um, when I was in Europe but I don't any won't anymore um, the only time the appropriate time for pictures in churches is places like a wedding or a christening but as a tourist just gawking no it's it's not necessary not necessary at all but yeah that's that's just me um but yeah so sarah and i walked through a nice little area on the foreshore uh, a bit of a boardwalk there we met up with her brother and he took us to we went to the aquarium so i still got to see the fishes that swim in the area um, which were pretty cool it was a good good little aquarium nothing majorly flashed but it was still a good aquarium And then after that, uh, we went to a perfume store, um, which was quite amusing. I wanted to go into one, but I was, I'd never, I hadn't asked. Um, but I also, also worried about going in to one of these places because of all the smells. I suffer some horrible horrible um, trying to find the right, right word I have some rea reactions to some fragrances that can be uh, cause a lot of grief um, make can can make me quite unwell cause migraines and that so I didn't want to go into perfumery but I did want to and so I end up going into this one um, it was quite good I, I will say I came out of it um, my clothes smelling a perfume but my head was still clear which is a good thing uh, I'm someone that reacts to lavender so when we go into a perfume place there was if there had been a strong hint of lavender I would have had to have walked out but um, what they had was not just the perfumes it was the fragrance oils um, and I brought packet sorry a box box of five or six of the fragrance oils um, and a gentleman that was talking about them was saying you know talking about all these different ones and I he talk, started talking about eucalyptus no and oh, well, we won't, I don't need to worry about that one he goes oh you should smell it it's really nice I said no I'm straight I'm Australian he goes oh okay <laughs> you, you know what eucalyptus smells like um, so it was really good going in and getting all these fragrances. I did get a few different fragrances. Um, they apparently can create, if you have a fragrant, sorry, a you have a favourite fragrance. Get it out. If you have a favourite fragrance, um, they can make that right there and then with everything that they've got. Um, but yeah I'm not a big one on the, the fragrances I do have a fragrance that I get um, black musk I do like that one and I did get a black musk from them so yeah that was uh, that was cool to get I also got some of their cute little perfume bottles which um, one was actually like an oil burner and unfortunately it broke on the way home and packing but yeah so we've gone into the perfumery I've walked out there smelling absolutely divine and not a headache in sight so not a not a start of a migraine so that was a bonus for me come on turn over okay hang on let's 
getting that that piece of crapola excuse the wording um so well just as we were leaving we've left there and there was like sarah said you know is there anything else you want to see um i was taken to another i was taken to a coptic church which is the egyptian christian church so i went in there um and because of her religion she didn't even walk me up to the gate she just waited in the car and said there's a church you can go in she told me a bit about it right right and then on the way back to the hotel you know i turned around before we started heading back to the hotel i said i need to get some coke and she goes oh yeah we can get you pepsi and i said no i want some coke um so the biggest struggle i had in egypt was getting a can of coke a drink of coke not the standard drink that you get in the hotels there they have most of them carry pepsi and if you're a pepsi drinker or you're a coke drinker you understand the struggle is real trying to find the right drink all right so um we've pulled up at this <laughs> deli type place shop and I've gone to get out and Sarah's gone, no, 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 you, you stay in the car. Uh, she's just said, I'll oh, just give her some money. So I gave her some money and her brother got out of the car. She didn't even get out of the car. She sat in the car uh, with me and he went in and he came out with a, a few cans of Coke for me. And he's given me his, giving my money back. And I've looked at it. Uh, yeah because it was like hang on that's not what I've been paying elsewhere I turned around and said to him how much was it and he turned around and told me um, it was actually one tenth of the price I was paying if I went into there I would have been charged um, it would have cost me tourist price but he was paying local price so yeah, yeah I got some really cheap coke from there which is which is good Uh, and so yeah from there I've just gone back to the hotel I've had dinner and just gone back to my room and chilled and updated my website gone through more of my photos um, I think I've spoken to Nathan see how he's going it's fun trying to keep in contact with somebody when their time zones are so different um, but yeah so that was that was that day um the next day um was okay excuse the nose it's starting to play up oh pardon me the next day was i uh, was booked not through a tour company i was went through it went through a um a rescue company written on a rescue company but a rescue place that rescues animals um uh, Hagada horse riding so they rescue animals so all their animals are not necessarily brought uh, uh well they probably are brought but they're, they're they're rescued they're saved from a horrible life of whatever you know whether it's just even just wandering around the streets with you know nothing to eat um so yeah i've gone i booked this and i was um when you i will say when you normally when you book to do horse riding as a tourist most times that you end up with in a group going with a group ending up with a group of people that you don't know that's okay but generally it's with horses that walk and trot and that is it and they're well controlled in that way so that people that don't ride much um can still do have the experience of horse riding so i fit into the category of someone who doesn't ride much um you know i have not ridden for a long time i, I do like horses but i don't i'm very much out of practice and I've been put on this horse. Um, if you're on the website, you'll see the the the, the picture with Hannah. <laughs> okay, so um, 
they've got me Hannah and they've said, oh, well, you know, she's a stubborn, she's very stubborn. Yep, no worries. So it's just the group that went was uh, the guide or and there was one other guy and myself. So there was no, there was nothing gentle about this ride. And Hannah um, was pretty hard to get her moving. So you try and kick her and click her and do everything you can. And um, yeah, she wouldn't move. And then what she would do is when she did decide to move, it would be in a gallop. And I haven't galloped on a horse for 30 plus years. So, you know, it was, I'm not a little person. I bounced around quite a lot, quite a lot. But, oh gosh, it, it was good. It was really good out in the desert. Um... If I had known that it would have been like the way it was, I probably wouldn't have booked it. Um, but then, yet again, like a lot of things, if I hadn't have known, I wouldn't have booked it, I wouldn't have had that experience. So, eh. Uh, anybody that has is going to Hagada and has the horse riding skills, I would say to them to contact these guys because it's a good cause, you know, you're, when you go and do these, the, the funds that you're giving them, that what you're paying to do this um, goes towards helping the rescue of other animals, other horses, dogs, there, I think there was even a donkey there. Um, so yeah, um, I we got to our midpoint, which was our turnaround point, Hang on, our midpoint of the desert ride, which would be the best way to put it. Um, and we've stopped at a, a house um, and sat and had tea and I've struggled to get off the horse. And I've sat very carefully when we're having our tea. Um, sitting in the shade. It was really nice. Um, and then <laughs> we've climbed back on the horses to go back. Yep, great. Yet again, the horse taking off in a gallop and a canter, and I'm bounce and trying my hardest to stay on, knowing full well that by the time this ride was over, I was going to struggle to walk. Which, yeah, came true. But the plan was to ride the horse and then on the way back go via the beach. And then ride the horses bareback into the ocean. Um, I turned around and went, I cannot do it. I am hurting too much. I can't continue on on the back of this horse. So we've ridden to where the beach is, um, which was also our pickup point anyway. It was where, do I, where I was getting picked up. Um, and the guy with the horse... The, the two that were, that, were, did, were, that were with me, so one was the guide and the other was uh, another paying client. Um, they've taken Hannah and they've taken her into the water and had all the fun there. Um, but yeah, I was, my limitation on riding her further and onto, into the water, well, I was not going to be able to do it. I was not going to have any form of control over her. <laughs> My horse riding skills skills were way out of the requirement for um, that to immodity. But it was still good. So I've been picked up, driven back to the hotel. I am absolutely reeking of horse and already starting to hurt. And... Uh, it was like, well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a bath and I'm going to soak. But once I got to my room, I got a nice little message. And I think, yeah, on my webpage, I've just looked up on my webpage, you can actually see a picture of a necklace. I got a message from...
from a rep representative of Ask Aladdin letting me know that they were going to be downstairs at a certain time down in the lobby at a certain time and they had my necklace my gosh was I wrapped something that I thought I wouldn't see again um, I got back um, now this company has gone what they did they went above what they needed to but they've gotten got me my necklace back so I was absolutely wrapped and yeah I mean still now I'm still impressed with with the fact that you know I've lost my necklace and they've chased it up and gotten it to me so yeah so basically I've gone down the lobby got my necklace and um yeah basically I ordered dinner in my room for the whole time that I've been away on this trip I've never ordered and hadn't re ordered room service I ordered room service this time it was <laughs> I've had a good soak in the tub and just kick back um, one of the things traveling solo is you get used to being alone um, and dealing with not having company so you you know you sitting down to a meal in your room as room service uh, instead of going to into one of the restaurants is probably easier because sometimes when you go into restaurants and you sit at a table all by yourself and you're seeing other people having conversations and that you kind of go oh, I wish I had someone to talk to but so yeah, um, I enjoyed the night with a nice little dinner room, bit of room service, and a relax. Um, and packed my bags and got my stuff together for the next day to be to head off. Ooh, part of me shouldn't be yawning yet. Okay so that was part of my leisure days where the tour company actually didn't have anything booked for me so everything i did was booked outside of the tour company uh, my last day of Hagada was to be picked up taken to the airport and then fly from Hagada to cairo and then picked up at cairo airport and driven to Alexandria um, yeah so that was that was that was actually a very long day very long day uh, one of the things that I had a good chuckle about for myself was the fact that the Hagada airport in so I've done quite a lot of flights gone through security and my yeah, you get the little deodorant cans, they're only about that big, only small de deodorant cans, the travel ones. So I've had that in my bag everywhere I've gone. Well, Hagada Airport Security uh, saw, saw it and went, no, you can't take it, it's flammable. And it's like, well, I've been on planes before with it. Nope, not on our planes, you don't. So um, it's funny, I'd fly in Egypt Air from Cairo to Aswan and then down to Abu Simbel they hadn't taken it off me but they had at this airport it was really strange but yep one less can of deodorant <laughs> gone um, so yeah flown uh, flown from Haggadah to Cairo now I've gotten off the plane uneventful flight but I've gotten off the plane and I think I need to pull my calculations out bear with me so I've gotten off the plane yep nope hang on sorry I'm trying to find something here the exchange rates so to use any of the toilets in Cairo what they like to do is 
um, you give a two pound a, yeah, a two pound coin to use the toilets I didn't have any coins at all I struggled to get coins so I was always giving notes for the toilets I was getting <laughs> looked after when I was going but um, so the toilet attendants um, you know you give them that the give you give them a tip because they're the ones that are looking after the bathrooms and keeping it clean um, something that I don't see you know it's just something that in Australia you don't you don't see that it, government plays for people to do that cleaning so anyway I've gone in and the only thing that I've had is a 200 Egyptian pound note okay so 200 Egyptian pounds currently is $11 US or $15 Aussie right if I had have given her what they normally what you normally pay which is two pound 15 there we go Oop, I had it then okay anyway 11 cents US or 15 AU Aussie so there was a big difference between what the standard is from 15 cents oh, sorry if I go in the US so you can understand it, it <laughs> means the same anyway so it's the same as like 11 US dollars you purchase something that's only 11 US dollars yet you pay 11 uh, sorry 11 US cents and you pay 11 US dollars for um, I if if there had been a gold toilet seat I'm quite sure she would have put the gold toilet seat down for me and heated it and all of that for me um, and it was because it was the only cash that I had on me was that one 200 Egyptian pound so that I have learned is a really 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 good tip and I think it was when I did that that I realized I had been over tipping my whole time um, now as an Australian Australians overseas apparently have a reputation of being bad tippers it's because we don't do it we don't know how to do it it's not something that we need to we do in Australia um, so yeah you know I always worry that I'm going to under tip and it's not going to be appropriate well <laughs> I discovered that I've been over tipping so oh well it helps those that are doing the jobs like that it helps them um, with their lives and you know that's part of part of traveling I suppose but yeah so yeah I've, I've used the bathroom and this lady's given me the gold service treatment um, and I've come out of the airport to be met by Mr. Ramadan who met me the first time and taken to the vehicle and it was the same my same driver that I've had right through Cairo, all through Cairo uh, same vehicle same vehicle same driver so it was fantastic I was getting into a vehicle with somebody I knew and trusted could get me around safely through Cairo uh, but yeah from the airport we've driven through Cairo I don't know where uh, we've stopped and picked up um, Miss Susie so Miss Susie was actually my guide for Alexandria and so we've picked up Miss Susie and then we've driven along a bit and dropped off Mr Ramadan so it was Miss Susie myself and my driver and I'm still kicking myself that I can't recall my driver's name I didn't write it down anywhere um, but yeah so um, we dropped off Mr Ramadan and Miss Susie's and turned around and said right this is what we're doing so 
we're now driving from Cairo to Alexandria um, and yeah so we you know, to do the the next couple of days in Alexandria um, it was a very long trip and the stupid thing is that it probably wasn't actually a long trip it just felt long after flying it was just that time of the day um, but basically that day was spent traveling from Haggadah to Luxor sorry to Haggadah to Cairo to Alexandria so it was just a, a travel day there was nothing else to it we've gotten into Alexandria you know and checked into where I was uh, staying now this is where I say I was staying at the Sheraton Mon Sheraton Montage or something like that and um, I was getting checked in I didn't realize that that, that Miss Susie and uh, my driver actually stay elsewhere um, but um, yeah I was taken there and checked in and the guy that what are they porters the guy that carried, ha, took my my luggage up to my room um, was an interesting experience um, and one of the things you need to work be be very cautious of when you travel alone um, nothing really happened the he carried my bags up put my bags up into my room and then he wanted to take a photo with me so he did a selfie with me and he wanted a few more selfies and then he tried to kiss me and I've slapped him and yelled at him to get out of my room um, I do not know what happened whether that's a standard process over there but I don't believe it is I could have actually rung up management and complained about it I didn't I'm not that type of person um, I was tired I suppose if I hadn't have done such a long trip maybe I would have done something um, but I will say for the rest of the time that I was in that hotel whenever he spotted me he put his head down in shame So, um, yeah, that's just, you need to be prepared for that kind of stuff when you travel solo. All he did was try to kiss me, um, and that was it. But then, um, I'm very capable of defending myself. So, yeah, that kind of put me on edge at that, pup, that point. Um, but all good so I've turned around unpacked cleaned had a shower and then gone looking for somewhere to eat dinner and now this is where it was really good this place I found was in the uh, hotel complex called Mama's and it was actually an Italian restaurant with the red checked cloth 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 oh tablecloth would probably be the best way to put it um, and yeah it was really really nice and now because I've been struggling with the cuisine I've looked at every at the menu and gone okay chicken Caesar salad that's what I'll have you can't go wrong with a chicken Caesar salad um, but yeah I had they brought me out all sorts of breads and oils and it was really I had a good meal um, but the chicken Caesar salad was huge absolutely huge really good and it's the only place that I found real bacon it actually had pork bacon in it which was really really good to see so uh, yeah that was uh, my dinner that night and it was a it was a good feed good restaurant they were 
there is a place under directly underneath that restaurant though that um, they were renovating so you'd hear them with their jackhammer drills and trying to eat dinner um, made it hard but it was okay there the food was good I was enjoying the food and that's what it's you know going out to a restaurant is about the ambience but the food is what makes it uh, if it had been shit food yeah I wouldn't have been staying there I would have had to find somewhere else um, but yeah so that was yeah really good meal just had the interruption with the jackhammers going off every now and then and then that was it called it a night didn't really have much of a look around the complex um, yeah I just didn't have much of a look around didn't wasn't in the mood uh, whether it was it because of that guy that carried my bags up just put me in a foul mood I don't know yeah the next morning I was picked up um, Miss Susie has picked me up and we've gone around Alexandria so the first place that I was taken to I only saw a couple of things uh, of real significance one was the catacombs um, not able to take photos inside the catacombs which you know fair call <laughs> it's where people used to be dead used to be there yeah I'm happy not to take photos in places like that um, so <laughs> Find there's dead people everywhere in, in Egypt where I did take photos um, so you're taken around the catacombs and explained that and gone down and around and yeah just different I suppose the streets of Alexandria were amazing to see people um, getting around they have the, and I don't know they're called it what they're called there, but they have the tuk-tuks that you get in some of the Asian countries, which are actually illegal in Egypt, but they're everywhere. Um, on tram lines, driving towards trams on the tram lines. <laughs> it's just classic to see. Um, Come to Australia and have a look at how it is in Australia and then have, then go back and look at Egyptian traffic. Uh, you understand why I chuckle at their traffic. Mine, I think it's a lot of places traffic in comparison to Egypt. It's just so much overpopulation there. Uh, so yeah, we've done the catacombs and then we've gone to... Was it, what's, what's it called? Um the pillar Pompeii pillar I think it was yeah Pompeii pillar is where we went to next um, so I wandered around there and had a look and Miss Susie's given me more of a chat about things and um, there was other places I could go if I wanted to go and I've turned around and I said to well you know I could I could have gone into their museum and their library and and things like that. Now I've turned around and I said, I just want to see, um, I'd love to just find somewhere to have a coffee. And I said, and I want to put my toes in the Mediterranean Ocean. Now it was cold in Alexandria. It had been drizzling, it was windy and the grey skies. And I've just, I want to go to the beach. I want to put my feet in the Mediterranean Ocean because I hadn't done it at that stage. So, um, yeah, we went to um, went to like the Monza Gardens and had a wander around there a bit, and then taken to the beach there, where you have to pay to go to the beach. You know, it just yeah. Um, and we sat on the beach in plastic chairs with these hot coffees in takeaway cups just on the beach and there's nobody else around 
because the weather is so miserable that nobody in their right mind would be there and I'm quite sure Miss Susie's like going seriously <laughs> but um, having turned around and said you know it's I want to put I haven't been to the Mediterranean Ocean that's something that I want to do so yeah she was she was really good we just sat there and we yacked and talked more about um, everyday life Um, you know what everyday life is like um, so yeah she, she's telling me some good stuff um, she is actually a Coptic Christian so Egyptian Christian um, very passionate about her religion as well and very open to talk about it I didn't ask many questions but you know um, then we're talking a bit more I talked about Australia which was really interesting because you know I said to her you know, some of the things that I've seen are so old so old that you know just the, the age of stuff is just astounding and I said to her, you know I live in a country where um, modern civilization didn't really get there until only 200 plus years ago said so, you know we did have we do have people that came from the country but there's no buildings so most of our buildings are all under 200 majority are under 200 years old uh, you know to come to Egypt everything is so old and has so much history and I said you know it's absolutely amazing and she turned around and she said that it would be ref she would find it refreshing if she could go to a country that was so new um, so I never looked at it that way you know I, you know I, I travel and I go to places that are have so much history in them and yet Australia only has 200 odd years of should I say white person history without me sounding rude um, so to work out the best way to put it. our his the Australian history is based on when it was colonized there is not much history based on the Aboriginal indigenous cult people um, and the indigenous culture they didn't you know they've been there 50,000 million years whatever I don't know how long but they've been there um, and Australia was left basically untouched and then was colonized and that was when history started being recorded I suppose the best way to put it but yeah so that was that side of it that was um we had a good chat about stuff like that and then got taken to restaurant yeah taken to a restaurant I think on the web page you can actually uh, this the main on the the main picture on that one in Alexandria the page that I'm talking about day 13 um, sat and had lunch at this really nice restaurant and yet again it was fish not much else on the menu but fish and I actually didn't order Miss Susie goes I, I ordered for you she said I, I've got your stuff that you probably wouldn't eat you wouldn't have tasted so I've ordered for you and I've just gone oh shit I'm in trouble because <laughs> I'm a fussy eater um so yeah out comes these dishes and um the first was that like we had come out with a platter with um breads and dips and i've looked at one of them and gone that's baba ganoush i really like that and so i recognize one of the dips at least it's good um yeah so we've had lunch 
Um, and there was, she ordered a fish dish and I struggled to eat it, so I've just stuck to eating the salads. Um, and I, I turned around and I said, I'm not a big fish eater. Um, for anyone that knows me, it's quite funny because in my early life, I was actually married to a professional fisherman. So fish to me, to eat fish, I learned to eat fish fresh, as in never been frozen, never been cryovac or vacuum sealed, just fresh, fresh fish. So I was spoiled. So whenever I get fish cooked up for me, I never seem to enjoy it. And that's generally because it's been frozen. Even if it's fresh frozen and snapped frozen and thawed quickly, I still seem to be able to tell the difference. So yeah, I don't like eating fish much. Um, so yeah, I basically ate, ate the salad. <laughs> um, and after that, that was it for the day. Um, back to the hotel and just... I think I did anything after lunch. I just sat back and did nothing. Ooh, part of me. Here we go. Yawning again. Okay. So, yeah, that was it for the day. And then we've turned around. And that night, I've packed up my gear and gotten ready to get gotten ready to be picked up in the morning. So in the morning, we um, there was a bit of a sightseeing tour, and then um, back to Cairo. So we went into the city of Quake Quake Bay. I'm trying. I think I'm not sure. Um, the correct pronunciation of that um, it was a citadel with a lighthouse um, yeah wandered around there took a few pictures um, I just stood there and and just watched the ocean pounding because the weather was not good um, you know it was a jacket requirement day basically the whole time I'd been in Alexandria jackets were required it was it was chilly <laughs> Uh, you tell anyone that you go to Egypt and you've had to wear a jumper they're, they're very surprised it's like hang on no Egypt's a desert place not on the coast not on the northern coast I'm quite sure a different time of the year it would have been very very nice uh, but it was chilly windy um, there's lots of school kids doing school tours and now wherever I've been I've noticed school tours but this was I suppose more lax more relaxed environment for the school tours I suppose um, probably because it was open air and near the ocean I don't know but yeah um, from there we then went to uh, another seafood restaurant um, I can't even remember what I ate I have no idea what I ate can't even remember if I enjoyed it or not um, which means obviously I probably I just ate it um, when it was time to go though Miss Susie's just before we were time to go Miss Susie's gone and paid for the meal um, because it's all part of the package so yeah that's paid that way um, she's sat down and then we've just waited for a while um, and I've gone, we're heading off soon. And she said, yeah, yeah, we just have to wait for a bit. Um, and then I've come out with um, some containers. What it was is she'd, the driver actually hadn't eaten. So he's down there sitting in the bus waiting for us and not having anything to eat at that point because nowhere in that area other than where we were that he could eat. So yeah, 
think they could have she could have ordered his lunch ordered his meal taken it out to him and then we continue to eat but oh well, it's how they arrange things so yeah we've had lunch and then we've piled into the bus and headed back to Cairo and what seemed like a trip that took forever to get from Cairo to Alexandria it was not very long of a trip at all and yeah from there it was a case of the driver took me to the hotel we dropped no Miss Susie stayed in the car so we got, got to the hotel back to the uh, where I was for, spent the first couple of nights the pyramid ho the Mina house and checked in and I got I actually got the room with the pyramid view so I actually did get a room where I could sit on my bed and see the pyramids so that was really cool um, yeah that was uh, I said goodbye to Miss Susie um, driver came and, and you know driver turned around and said he'd see me in the morning and that was it for the night and that was basically it for the tour in the morning you know I've been told I need to be at the re reception be picked up at such and such a time to go back to the airport to go home but that night I had to, the same shrimp prawn dinner that I had on my first two nights there same drink was really good um, so yeah that was um I'd gone into the hotel lobby as well and picked up because I'd done my shop done some shopping and it was all stored there I'd actually picked um, picked up what I'd had left there which was these towels the proper Egyptian cotton towels and I've looked at them and, and I've thought oh heck how am I going to get them in my suitcase <laughs> I had that another thought of oh shit I shouldn't have brought so many I'm not regretting buying them now so yeah after dinner I spent about two and a half hours trying to pack my suitcase packing repacking redistributing moving stuff around so that I could get everything I could in my suitcases um, weight wise wasn't the issue it's the fact that these towels they weren't towels they were bath sheets so they were huge and they were fluffy <laughs> and they took up a bucket load of space in my suitcase Oops, what have I just found there? Um, so yeah, that's... What have I just... Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay, come on, be nice. So yeah, it's taken me quite a while to get this suitcase. I'm just... What I'm doing is right here, I, I can feel something that's... There it is. I could feel a drill that wasn't stuck in properly that's better um tell you it took me quite a while to pack this lazy case up okay <laughs> oh yeah okay so where did that go let's, let's come up something look really good radio uh, uh, next 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 sorry I'm trying to work out my next color 
which I can't send it. There it is. Okay. So yeah, packed my suitcase after a much had issue. Um, and did not much else. Had my dinner, went to bed, all of that standard thing the night before you go home. Um, my flight home. Hang on, I'm just trying to get the line in. There we go. My flight home was a flight from Cairo to Dubai and then Dubai to Perth. I booked an early flight out of Cairo where I was going to end up sitting in Dubai for about, I think it was about eight hours, eight, nine hours. And my plan was to, when I got to the Dubai airport to check into the lounge, I would have a shower, um, freshen up, had have a sleep because I met because I had the um, access to the lounge, the airport lounges which have sleeping areas and that in them. Um, I plan to actually make use of that time to actually sleep and try and do a little bit of time adjustment before I go home and have to deal with jet lag on the way home or when I got home. So yeah, I um, spent. About eight hours in the Dubai airport, chilling, eating, drinking, showering, sleeping. Um, I'll tell you one thing, if you ever get the opportunity or you're doing long distance flights and you've got to stop over somewhere, even if it's five hours, four or five hours, see if you can buy a lounge pass. Because I'm actually with um, Qantas, I actually got access to the their lounge in the Emirates lounge but you can buy a pass to get into these and they are so worth it um, traveling solo it, it, it does it makes you feel a lot safer you're not sitting out in um, you're not sitting in the airport chairs trying to kind of have a sleep in the seat where with it's so bloody uncomfortable in the lounge there was spaces where you lie lie down that had blankets pillows and bed socks that when you get up you throw them into a container and they take them away go wash them sterilize them etc um so yeah that was um Mm. that was that that was um made it made made it made a big difference um when you get into any of the lounge the airport lounges sorry i was losing my track i thought the airport lounges um you will find that when you use them there is the food and drinks including alcohol is all part of the cost of being in there so if you actually have a membership there, it doesn't it doesn't cost you anything. If you pay to go in, um, that covers the cost of your drinks and meals. And it's all self-service, or you've got people at counters that serve you, or it's self-service service on some things as well. But I tell you what, once you've done, once you've travelled with the and used airport lounges. Um, when you do another flight where you don't get access to a lounge you notice it <laughs> you really notice it and how do I know I know you notice it so much is because I just did a trip without a, without lounge access uh, it's nothing like sitting on a comfy chair while you're waiting as opposed to sitting on the uncomfortable rows of chairs in airport terminals but yeah so, um, flight back from uh, Dubai, I'm sorry, I've lost my words there. Flight back from Dubai was uneventful, the seat next to me was empty, um, so I managed to sleep on the flight. I think I spent the last 
hour or so chatting to the woman that was next in the seat next to my empty one um, so yeah all in all it was a good trip a summary of it I would I I won't be going back to Egypt again I knew that when I went that I wouldn't go back um, it's a you know one of those phrases I use it's a once in a lifetime holiday which it is in most cases some people is that that go to Egypt love it so much that they they have to go back um, but for me it was one where okay I've seen just about everything I could which is why I booked additional stuff to see um, I won't head back to Egypt at all there's lots more plate things in the world for me to go and see before I go back to Egypt would I recommend people go yes would I recommend a solo female yes if you go with a company that is reputable definitely would I recommend a solo female to travel with the company I used who was Ask Aladdin yes I was looked after I had a couple of things where it was not quite right um, I had only one stage in the whole trip that I really concerned for my safety um, well maybe one and a half the porter although I wasn't really concerned for my safety there because I knew I had how to deal with him um, but for my I had one section of the whole trip where I felt I felt that the environment I was in was just if something happened I wouldn't have been able to get out of it. only once which is not bad for a country that you know where people are like saying you know how bad things are um, so as a solo traveler I would recommend solo female traveler I would recommend going with the guys I used they were pretty good very respectful um, and things that I did raise with them were resolved pretty quick um, which is really good um, so yeah definitely would recommend them and uh, yeah I know people say yeah you know, like there's comments about being brave um, it's not necessarily about being brave it's about um it's the best way to put it taking the bull by the horns not being brave um purely because some of these places for me to travel alone okay if i want to go to some places my partner doesn't want to go either i have to go with somebody else or i do it alone um by going alone I decide where I go when I go what I do there's no actually having to go make a choice between two and traveling solo you actually meet people anyway you, you meet so many people when you travel solo it's pretty cool whoops I missed those two there you go. I'll put those two in. Um, oops. So yeah, if if you can afford to, if you want to, where did that go? There it is. There it is. Still not got it. Um, yeah if you want to see something and you can't get anyone to go with you there's nothing wrong with going solo all you need to do is research to make sure your safety is taken into consideration um, that's all I do when I travel alone um, you know I get there and it's like some things it's like I would like to share the experience with my partner but if he's not prepared to go I'm not going to go well if you don't go I don't go um, I'm not like that and he wouldn't stop me from going if I want to go somewhere he won't stop me 
So you need to work out whether you don't want to travel solo because you don't want to be alone or you're prepared to travel solo even though you are alone because you really want to see something different and you want to experience stuff. Why should, if you want to go and see something, why should the fact that somebody else doesn't want to see it impact you and prevent you from doing it? There's two choices. Um, is the, the big one is the flexibility either way. It's like, well, if you have a partner and your partner turns around and says, well, I don't want to go, it's like, okay, you don't want to go. I really want to see this. How about you come with me and then I'll do something you like. There's the compromise there. And what you get out of that is two holidays instead of one. <laughs> Hope you like that logic. And then the flip side of it is, well, turn around and say, well, just because you don't want to see it, why should I not see it? And if you do everything you can about your safety, make sure you have good life insurance and good travel insurance. Um, and you can afford it. You can save up to go. Why not? You know, I'm, I was a single mum. My kids are now all grown up now. I have the ability to travel. And just because my partner doesn't want to travel to these places doesn't mean that I shouldn't travel. It's a big world out there. There's lots to see and do. So yeah. I don't know how long I've been uh, rabbiting on for. Oh, it's about just over an hour. Um, I have had a little play with my camera and um, to look at doing lives um, it is now I'm just going to pull up the clock so if I look time wise now it's nearly it's 20 past uh, 20 past 10 Friday night in Perth so it's what, 20 past 2 in London and then 20 past 9 in New York in the morning. So if I do a, a live at this time of day, one, I'd be having my eyes hanging out, I'm ready to go to bed. Um, but most people will be running around with their lives, getting their lives underway, um, getting their busy days underway. So um, I'm trying to work on times that's suitable possibly will be morning or middle of the day and even if I go middle of the day if I go I suppose 12 hours earlier than 12 hours we'll probably make it about nine o'clock in New York I don't know time zones there but yeah you know maybe nine ten o'clock in the morning it might be a suitable time to do lives um, I don't know I suppose if I just put a lot, do a live, and if somebody joins, somebody joins. If they don't, nobody joins, nobody joins. Um, but if you're subscribed and you got the bell, you'll be notified when I go live. Um, so yeah, I'm going to continue on and um, work on getting this done. Um, I've got basically. Let's see if I can roll this along. Whoop. Don't want to drop them. So I've still got quite a way to go yet to the end. Something I do want to say though is something that I picked up while I was um, working on this. Um, and unfortunately I'm going back to the comment about folded canvas. I discovered something rather interesting on the bottom of on the side of this canvas. I'm just gonna fold it and move it around or bend it not fold it ah, gosh come on round. round we come round we come okay on here hang on I 
on here there's a little thing that says note okay so read the notes one choking hazard keep away from children the two the adhesive is water soluble avoid contact with water three in case the canvas becomes dirty it may be cleaned with a wet cloth four do not scrape the rhinestones from the canvas to avoid damaging the adhesive five this is the funny one to preserve the integrity of the canvas avoid folding it um, I just find that really funny for the for what's going on with this um, but yeah that's just a, an interesting thing that's on the canvas itself yet yeah, you receive it folded but yeah but um, doesn't matter doesn't worry me but look at that I'm just doing a little bit of a shimmer and she's sparkling nicely. I have put the beads on the on the boot. Um, there is here the AB drills are here. You actually can't tell that they the, the AB drills are there. AB drill says. Um, I'm trying to see, there's some more AB drills. So AB drills are up here. And here. These ones here. But you can't really tell that they are AB. Right there. I've just... Hang on, I've just seen a... Alright. So yeah, I'm going to leave that drill with me right there. Obviously I'm going to continue on. I want to get this thing moving. Um, I'll just drop the overhead light and the under light. You can see how that's looking now. Still got a gorgeous sparkle to it. And then the IB drills the beads are there. Oh yeah okay so thank you for watching uh keep an eye out there might be a live drill with me coming up soonish um i might even try attempt it tomorrow and see how we go but otherwise i'll talk to you later and bye for now